Right, Jamie Oliver, has he'll be there, has branded UK teenagers embarrassingly wet, saying they shun hard work and get their mums to stick up for them. In an interview with The Observer, Jamie said he was astonished by the attitude of British children, comparing them to young Polish and Lithuanians, who he said are tough and work hard. Are British teenagers lazy and feckless then? Or are we being too hard on them and expecting too much? 0500 909 693. Text us 85058. Joan Burney is a columnist for the Daily Record. Hello, Joan. Hello. Good to speak to you again. Good and to speak to you as well, Tony. Ha- th- thank you, Joan. Thank you very much. That's been noted. <laughs> Harrison Carter is with us, Member of the Youth Parliament for Sheffield. Joan Burney, a bit of a sweeping generalisation, isn't it, from Jamie Yeah, Oliver? a sweeping generalisation, but why is it a sweeping generalisation? Because generally it's sweepingly true. You think teenagers well, not... are embarrassingly wet? I think so. I think, uh, well, they moan a lot. I mean, I think it's a hard, li- uh, tough life for everybody out here just now. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But teenagers do expect an awful lot. And uh, when the world doesn't give them the instant riches which they think their brilliance uh, earns them, they, they go in okay. half All and right. they take to their beds and they don't get up. All right. Mm. Just just while you say that, I'll come back to you in a second, Harrison. We're just going to break briefly here. Uh, Joan Burney and Harrison Carter then discussing whether teenagers are embarrassingly wet. Joan has said yes. Harrison, what do you make of that? Joan talks about um, teenagers when they don't get the support that they expect to then they head to their beds and, and moan. The support teenagers expect in society, which I think is the support they need, is um, services pr- providing opportunities for them. At the moment, with the, the coalition government um, coming into power, we've seen bodies providing legal support being abolished. We've seen connection services no longer being able to deliver job consultations for young people. Um, and to me, it's a crash and burn of the facilities available to them. And that isn't them being lazy. That's not them expecting a service. Mm. That's, in my mind, them requiring a service. And, and, and that's not but, being but given you know, to them now. Jamie, Jamie himself, we heard him just say a moment ago he was let down by the system. What, take into account most teenagers. Yeah. All right, I appreciate there are, there, are, there, are, there are many young kids who do need special help. They have special needs, all sorts of things. But take the majority of teenagers, right? Should they not just help themselves? They go to school... They receive us. It's down to them to work hard. That's what some people listening to this will be saying. Absolutely, and I wouldn't um, argue against them. People, teenagers do have to work hard. I mean, at the moment, I'm studying my A levels, um, and obviously, there is a degree of hard work within those. Um, but what we have to do is we have to get away from this snobbery that suggests the only way for someone such as a teenager to succeed is through that route. In fact, what we need to be seeing is more teenagers being involved in uh, taking apprenticeships, more opportunities for them to go into internships. Um, and the government really need to show support in that way. And if the, there are teenagers going to bed moaning about not being able to find a job, well, the reason why they're doing that is because the demand for jobs has, uh, in terms of young people has, in, has increased, but the supply hasn't met that demand and 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 that's that's a reasonable thing to complain about you would expect a job if you want a job okay uh stay with us harrison and joan as well we'll come back to this after the news we'll take your calls on this as well oh five hundred nine and nine six nine three this is bbc radio five live with tony livesey yes and with me at the moment joan burney columnist for the daily record hello again joan hello tony and harrison carter member of the youth parliament for sheffield we're talking about jamie oliver who says all uk teenagers are in imba- well he says uk teenagers i'm putting the word all there but he implies a lot of them are embarrassingly wet uh, and not up to much jonathan's on the line hello jonathan hi tony can you see any good in uk teenagers I think most of the UK's teenagers are nothing more than feral beasts. They um, they know all their rights, but none of their responsibilities. Right. They commit an awful lot of crime and are a general nuisance, lowering the tone of their local communities. Right. They, what, a, what, a, what a very misinformed comment. This is Harrison, who's a member of the Youth Parliament. Go on, Harrison, have a word with Jonathan. It's a very misinformed comment to suggest that all young people are, well, whatever you call them, rodents or something. Feral beasts. Feral beasts. Um, if you could, for me now, perhaps substantiate that statement, um, give me some statistics in terms of youth crime, that'd be great. Over to you, Jonathan. Well, this is not about statistics. This is about quality of people's lives. People's lives are being ruined by youngsters whose parents exercise no control over them, who encourage and indulge their bad behaviour, who ruin the lives of innocent people with their fuggery and crime. 
Jonathan, would you suggest that most young people do this behaviour, uh, sort of enact this kind of behaviour? Yes. And fully, therefore, my, my comment about the need for statistics would, would be valid because from what I see, in terms of my community, young people are doing excellent things for the community. For example, recently we had the mosquito device banned in Sheffield, a highly device that demonised young people. We also have young people now um, in Sheffield working with the National Citizenship Service going out and, and cleaning up you know, elderly uh, people's drives. We have young people going out and working in, in, in peer mentoring systems and actually doing some good for society. So I, I, in that context, I won't agree with you. I do understand because there are some young people who, who are really unwilling to make a contribution and don't accept the role that they should play in society. And I do accept that. However, I think it's again a bit of a generalization to suggest that most of them okay. are, are in that state. Jonathan, you've obviously got you've obviously got certain issues and they're understandable, but do you think there's hope for the for the UK teenager? Not at the moment. I believe there's been a total breakdown in uh uh respect uh by young people for the elders. This description of a person is uh in no way exclusive exclusive only to to, to young people. Yeah. Um th these are characteristics that um are, are portrayed, you know, throughout generations adults as well. Jonathan may may have got particular issues there, but there there are quite a few people who do say who will be thinking now well teenagers do expect everything on a plate and aren't prepared to work for them and, and that sort of thing. Can you understand that? Yeah, I can because they do expect to be hand-fed. I I I listen to to, uh, to to what's been said and of course it's not all teenagers and it's not so much that they're out there being feral beasts that an awful lot of them are apathetic and they won't get up I mean it's, it's only anecdotal but you know here's a tale from my own local painter he wanted to take on some apprentices he took on two boys the problem was that they had to be in work at 8 o'clock every morning. They couldn't do it. They just simply could mm. not get out of their beds. Mm. One of those, he, he tried to get rid of one of them. His granny came round on her knees and begged him to re-employ her little boy. So he re-employed her little boy, and she said that she would make sure he was there every day at 8, and he was until she went on holiday. And immediately... Without his granny to get him out of his bed in the morning, he stopped turning So up. what, Joan, would inspire young people, then? I don't know what it is. They, they, I, I, I sometimes actually blame the, the, the monster in the corner of the box. They all want to be rich and famous without any effort whatsoever. Mm. Perhaps they watch too much uh, X Factor. Well... They think that that somebody should give it to them rather than then that they're entitled. It's, it's a sense of entitlement, I think, which annoys a lot of people. OK, Joan, good to speak to you again. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, that's Joan Burney from The Daily Record and Harrison Carter as well. Cheers, Harrison. Youth, Thank you. Uh, member of the Youth Parliament for Sheffield. Tony Livesey, 5 Live, 12 minutes to 1. On DAB Digital Radio, Digital TV, downloads and online.